Welcome to the 2023 Antigua Forum hosted by the Universidad Francisco Marroquin, a free market university here in Guatemala. Today we are with Arthur Chait, a successful executive and entrepreneur. He is the founder and former CEO of EOPLEX, which produces miniature devices using 3D printing that are used with semiconductors. Art, welcome back to the Antigua Forum. Thank you. You mentioned before you were the president of the Antigua Forum in 2016, yep. the year that John Carlo passed, who was the founder of the Antigua Forum and had been president of UFM. Um, you worked very closely with him during that time. Uh, what can you say about that time you worked with him? Uh, well, I was honored to have uh, worked with John Carlo. He's a, he was a, an amazing person. Um, one of my fondest memories, uh, his doctor would bring, he, so I never saw Giancarlo except in a wheelchair and with an oxygen mask. That's how far the AOS had progressed. And we, I made three trips here, separate from the Antigua Forum, to work on the model, which is what he wanted me to do. Arthur, I want you to work on our model. And I, I analyzed who, the, who are the customers of the Antigua Forum. Is it the, 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 the workers, the participants? Is it the university? Is it the donors? Is it the project leaders? Well, it's in different factors, it's all of them. And his, his uh, attendant, his doctor or nurse brought him in to, and said, you know, today we don't expect him to be working for more than about 30 minutes. Well, he would get energized, even in this late stage of the disease, he would get energized by the work. He was there for an hour and a half three times what they said. That was just so, so touching. And the, his mind stayed sharp right, right to the end. Um, he was coming up with ideas and new ideas and things we should do and things we should change. And yes, that'll work. And no, you, you know, maybe we could redo this. It, it was just inspiring. What can you say about having a perspective of a different place you've never been and then actually coming here? And what is your perspective now of Guatemala? It's, it's a very important point because I'm, I'm a, a natural recruiter. So I have brought projects. I have sponsored projects. I have brought participants and I am a booster, right? So I now have one of my missions is to explain to people that yes, okay, the State Department is talking about the worst parts of the city. But like I say, Baltimore, Philadelphia, we've got big problems in the United States. Um, the people here are just so friendly. Uh, so welcoming, and uh, we've been invited here, invited there, adopted as, as like a family, and the professionalism of the staff and the way the organization runs the college, the Antigua Forum, everything is, is world class. Well, it's, uh, speaking of your story, you've worked at varying levels of entrepreneurship and executive leadership over the years. Uh, what advice would you give to uh, aspiring entrepreneurs? You know, my, my route, my trajectory is, un, is a bit unusual, and I use it with my students to reassure them that you don't have to have the grand vision when you're 20 years old. So I started as a research scientist in material science and was all tech, but I got into management in that laboratory. I became director of research. And that's a different set of skills, right? That's talking to people, presentations and writing. And then I got an MBA and, and, and went into consulting, which I had never thought I would do, but it was in the technology field, Booz Allen, McKinsey style stuff, recruited by uh, Stanford Research Institute. After a while, you're, you're consulting to everyone. I went back into industry. So I went into manufacturing and then software. And then I said, you know, I can do this. What has been one of your greatest challenges uh, in business and entrepreneurship and your career? It, it, it really is the classic people issue. Um, many people are very good at interviewing, but it's, it's a facade that when they start the job, they're not as good. And so you, you have to understand that you're probably going to end up training almost anybody you hire. And you better have a good program to do that or mentors or whatever, because people can learn almost anything. But when they present, it's often uh, in a inter job interview, it's often um, they're giving you the best view possible and they really can't do everything they're talking about. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how the science background led you to then one day consider starting your own company and leading it? 
I would tell my students, if you get a chance to lead a project inside a corporation, do so. I'm a bit unusual. You can start up early when you don't have much to lose, when you're young and you don't have a mortgage. There's a lot of people that start up. You, you can start up at any age, but that's one. The other one is what I did, which is toward the end of my career with all the experience that I had gained in various roles, management in consulting, management in tech, management in manufacturing. Then I decided, you know, it's time I give this a shot. Living in Silicon Valley, of course, it's like the air. It's all around you, so there's a draw. In other parts of the country or parts of the world, it's a little more difficult because it takes more guts. What have been some of the projects maybe you've been involved with or overseen or just kind of gotten to watch that really have inspired you that are, are memorable to you today? I remember one of the, the most remarkable was when they were building the new Panama Canal, the larger canal. Um, one of our members brought a project which was, well, there's this booming canal zone and over here there's this poverty area. Could we convince the government to convert that to a free enterprise zone where people could start businesses with no taxes, with incentives to, to help? Because why should it just be the booming Panama? And that worked. They did that. And uh, right. And I, I visited uh, in 2020, I went to the Panama Canal to, to, with our contact to, to take a look at the results. So what you're talking about is, you know, in the innovation process, you need collaboration. Yeah. But you, you know, you could say maybe on a Zoom call or in a in an office, you know, there's some level of that. But what you're also talking about is the sort of unstructured collaboration, the more organic type of stuff that happens uh, in that kind of environment, like the Antigua Forum, and that's what maybe you know Steve Jobs saw in the way he wanted to design the Apple headquarters and things like that. So. Yeah, um, maybe maybe speak one more time about the uh, the unstructuredness of the collaborative process. With the rules being, you know, we're not going to criticize your idea. We're going to listen to it. You know, we're going to get all the ideas out there. I mean, you might take you might take that model for the inside a company. It's how can you create this structured, unstructured chaos, random uh, over the problem that we're trying to solve. And here we've ter we've taken that to. Giancarlo took that to uh, a model which opens it up to many projects with many people, all simultaneously self-organizing and trying to, to solve problems. And, and so. Well, Arthur Chait, thanks for being back here at the Antigua Forum. Thanks for helping so put so much of the structure together over the years, uh, being a former president of the Antigua Forum. We're really grateful to be able to really follow on the foundations that people like you uh, help set so thank you so much for being back to the Antigua Forum. Thank you.